software, which might be using, okay. <laughs> Arts, which is more arts and crafts. So mm -hmm. let me tell you, my friends, Smooth. we have some people hanging out in the chat right now, and they're like, mm -hmm. I wonder if they are there. Were, you, were they here? Did you see them? Where'd you go? They see us now. They do. They, oh, they do. do. They do indeed. They see us now. I do not believe that you saw us earlier. Um, so if we've just been broadcasting, Thank basically, you. me, mea culpa. Um, oh, no. Uh, yep, Sean Vieira says, uh, uh, we got some movement. And a poop okay. says, yay. And now they have sound. That is so good. Do you see? There's an echo. Wow. Okay. Now, in our now, we're there now. When will then be now? Now. Um, there is an echo which is now on delay. I have no echo. Everything is fine. Okay. Oh Owen, Owen's getting an echo. Apook says, you know, things are great. So I guess it's sort of uh, six of one, half dozen of an Owen. So, wow. Okay. All Let right. me know. How's uh, no echo, echo left? Okay, great. Excellent. Um, hello, everybody, and welcome to Mutants and Masterminds Monday. We're early. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't like to tell a lot of people, but these are technically supposed to start at two thirty. <gasps> right. Mm -hmm. So you're you're right. all a little early. Um, yeah. So if you yeah. could yeah. just uh, just hang out. Yeah, just hang out for a minute. We're gonna just chat amongst ourselves and talk about what we're doing today. We're doing something cool, right? Couple of cool things. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, first, first really cool thing is reminding everybody that the condition the condition cards are real. Woo! They exist. You can buy them. They are print on demand right now from Drive Through RPG. They look great. Uh, you've got at least two copies of every single condition from the core book, so that is enough for your players to get one and your game master to have one, and it's fast, easy reference to hand out while you're well, you're just laying out the herd on each other. <laughs> I am stoked um, about that, and they do look really good. Uh, hello mm -hmm. to Raina. Hello to uh, Stan. Hello to Sean. Hello to Owen. Hello to Jason. Uh, glad that you're all here. Uh, I just realized I didn't introduce you. These people are just wondering, like, who the heck are these people? But, you know, we hang out with Crystal Fraser and Steve Kenson, and I'm the disembodied voice of Troy. And... Um, Oh, look at Owen Stevens busts in like a link wizard in training. Amazing. Owen Casey Stevens, the nicest man in gaming, is in our audience? Yes. I know, right? Uh, yes, know. exactly. I think we've arrived. But yeah, so yeah, Good the condition thing. cards. And then what? Uh, <laughs> uh, after that, we, I mean, I know nobody's asked about this, but we, we are really happy and proud of this. The Time Traveler's Codex print edition is finally going to start shipping this week. Woo! It's going to go up for orders. It is in the distributor warehouse. It is it is ready to be Christmas presents. It is here. It is fully materialized. We've, we've wedged it free of the time rift that it was in. Yeah. A chronal edit, eddy outside of the time stream. A yeah. a that chronal. seems to take a really long time. Yeah, it does. And yet, no time at all, technically. Right. right. Yeah. You're either early or you're late or you haven't quite yet. Uh, question. Um, did you say a chronal? Yes, chronal. And what does that mean? So time ish, right? Like it's a time, timey wimey. Mm -hmm. Timey wimey. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I like that. So. I like that. <laughs> Oh, I like that. Stan says it was always at this moment in time. We just had to catch up to it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's pretty. That's uh, that's like no prize. We had to get our own sort of no prize, you know, like. Uh, yeah, I guess I guess now that the book is going up for sale, we technically have to get started on it and ship it back in time to us. That's mm -hmm. true. That's true. And because of that, we uh, we kind of crafted a, an entire episode of Mutants and Masterminds Monday around around time. <laughs> Oh, crafted makes it sound like we did any actual preparation. <laughs> I know. I like to put a little spin on things. <laughs> to paraphrase, you know, Doc Brown, please excuse the crudity of this model because we didn't have time to build it to scale or paint it. 
Yeah, but if I do run into myself from the future, I've got some things to share. Don't push that button. Um, <laughs> all right. So, um, so yeah. So we're going to. I, I'm really excited about this because I love it when we get an opportunity to sort of take the contents of your brain and sort of pour them out onto the internet, uh, unfiltered, unfettered, un yeah. unvarnished. So yeah, we're doing a kind of a session zero, right? Uh, yeah. So we thought it'd be fun to the three of us sit down and kind of play out what a session zero looks like because we've talked about them on occasion before where you sit down with your your mm -hmm. game master and your players and you decide what do you want out of this campaign and what characters do you want to play and all that so i thought it would be a lot of fun to sit down and decide we're going to do a time travel campaign and have a session zero presumably with me being a player and the game master which takes me <laughs> back to high school right <laughs> I love it. So, I think, yeah. yeah. So I let's just, uh, what shall we do? Uh, well, I mean, first thing is, hi, everybody. I'm Crystal. Hi, Crystal. Uh, hi, Crystal. Uh, so yeah, let's, uh, let's look at a PL10 time travel focused superheroes game uh, using mutants and masterminds. Mm -hmm. uh, I am going to open up by saying, like, Personally, as GM, I prefer it if we had one time machine shared between the group. So, mm -hmm. like, nobody with individual time travel powers, just because it makes it easier to keep everyone together. Uh, and besides that, like, what do you guys want out of a fun time travel game? Hmm. Like, do you like wackiness? Do you like historical drama? Do you want to see the past, the future, alternate presence? <gasps> I like a lot of the opportunity to um, like save historical events and things like that in a time travel game where that's you're you're doing the you know like preventing the bad guys from changing history yeah kind like a, of of adventures like a Peabody and Mr. Sherman model where you go back in time and things aren't running like the history books say they should mm -hmm. and you put it back on track you got to fix things so like a like a temporal game wardens. Mm, yeah, yeah. Yeah, what do you think, Troy? You know, I, I like the sound of that, and I, I'm wondering if, um, you know, I, I do kind of like that race to the future past kind of thing. Um, I like the idea, of course, of us being together and not sort of running into each other in a time stream of some sort. Um, yeah, yeah, this all sounds good. Yeah. You want to be like cast together by fate or like all part of the same agency or do you want to like figure out character concepts first and then see what grows out of that i, I kind of hmm. I'd, I'd love it if we were sort of a uh, an elite sort of group trained for this mission in time okay so that's kind of suggests we've got a boss or bosses of some kind yeah we can go with that we got in the time travels code or time travelers codex actually got two different examples of temporal installations mm. so you can start out with a time travel headquarters oh i like it so you can have the event horizon which is like a sci-fi time cop slash like preserving the timeline sci-fi headquarters or there's mm -hmm. the void time zone which is a magical time travel dimension hmm interesting you see I'm kind of inclined almost to go with the magical option just because it's the kind of rare one you don't see very much of. Time travel so usually sci-fi. Yeah. It's I'm I'm not even subtle about the references I take. That's actually pulled from Ninja Turtle comics. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, half of what we publish in Eminem is just homages to our favorite comics. Pretty much. <laughs> Pretty much. That's hardly it's, a secret. Yeah. So yeah, mm -hmm. uh, we can give you guys a like a magical headquarters, and I will knock it down from seventeen equipment points to fifteen. That way, it divvies up to like an even five, nice even number. Yeah, five equipment points per player. Okay, mm -hmm. I like it. And then, yeah, I would suggest you know what? I'm also gonna say everybody gets the chronal bulwark feat for free. Mm -hmm. So if there's a change to the timeline, you will 
not be affected. Oh, good. Well, that kind of speaks to the character's eliteness, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of why they're good at this particular job. Yep. Uh, and for those playing or following along at home, that's another advantage that's introduced in the Time Traveler's Codex. Mm -hmm. uh, and so if you want if you want to have memories of your personal timeline, which you, you already have, and whatever new time you end up in, like if somebody changes the past, normally with chronal bulwark, you only remember your timeline, the mm -hmm. right time that you're from. Uh, right. If you get chronal memory, you'll remember both of them. Oh. So you'll know what's different across them. Mm. So you uh, sort of know the biography of your alternate self. Yeah. So like, yeah, you'll know that, oh, well, in this new timeline where Abraham Lincoln was assassinated by, uh, let's go with the French, mm -hmm. uh, that my character is now a gendarme in New Paris. <laughs> Hey, real quick, I want to bust mm -hmm. in and say um, hello to uh, Rainbow Sky, the gay and proud, says, um, and also because you are magical, Steve. <laughs> so I, I share that primarily because Rainbow is our very first chat from YouTube, a functioning <gasps> guest Ooh. who has joined us and is watching. So awesome. welcome and thank you for joining us. We got the YouTube working. Hello. We do indeed. We finally figured out what every 15 year old on the planet is just born instinctually knowing. No. Oh, hey, those kids. I was born before the internet. Back in my day. We all were. Back in my day, we had a curly Q phone cord and a BBS. But <laughs> do continue. Just saying, I remember when we called it the DARPA net and we were happy. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. right. Uh, so yeah, uh, let's uh, let's talk out some character concepts. What is what do people like to play? Hmm. Well, if we have a magical headquarters, mm -hmm. are the characters going to be all sort of magic users of some kind? Yeah. Uh, or are they, you know, just sort of recruited by this magical force agency organization? As far as that goes. Which sounds like more fun to you. Because hmm. it could go either way. You could right? be like time werewolves who are magical <laughs> or, <laughs> you know, an elite Avenger style group just gathered by time wizards. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm wondering if there could be some theming around sort of elements or something that we each sort of mm. possess a piece of and that oh. together okay. we kind of fit that the the puzzle the you know whatever whatever that is that unlocks our ability to travel through oh mm -hmm. so like the four classic elements fantastic four style mm -hmm. or like the triforce of wisdom courage and power that mm -hmm. feels right yeah yeah that triforce i like that yeah all right okay well it makes sense since we're basically talking about the three of us and three character concepts and all yeah. of that i don't know Troy, what do you want to play? You've got the, the least experience with the system, so. Yeah, I, I think I would, you know, so I, I, I'm tending to lean towards sort of a, that excited, um, you know, uh, uh, young, uh, foolhardy, a little sort of diving into, you know, problems of just so happy to be here, you know, that kind of thing. But it's a little <laughs> sort of um, on the nose of, you know, <laughs> when you don't know, play what you know. <laughs> Um, mm -hmm. but, yeah. uh, you know, so maybe that's it. Or, you yeah, know, the other yeah. thing I thought I would do potentially is sort of more of a stoic character, but I don't know if I've got it in me to not have it in me. So <laughs> we'll go so, with So if I'm following along, you either want to play like the audience insert new reader character like Jubilee, yes. or you want to be Wolverine. <laughs> that's right. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. Yeah. It's the time honored challenge, really. Yeah. You know, it is, it is indeed. All the way back to the Wolverine Shadow Cat days. You know, do I want to um, be Wolverine or do I want to be Shadow Cat? Right. I mean, the right, the correct answer of both. Eh. The correct answer is both. I want to play Laura. <gasps> right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, all right, well, how do you want to, what kind of problem solving skills do you want? Do you want to be like the social person in the group? Do you want to be the uh, the technical whiz kid? Uh, I think, what, do you want to be? Oh, oh yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, no, I was just going to say, I think maybe what this can be is a bit of um, uh, 
sort of that uh, happy-go-lucky sort of diving into danger unknowingly because I just don't realize what's happening, you know, and I'm like, this, what could, you know, he's hurt me yet. Um, mm -hmm. But then also Lots have, of ranks of luck. I was just going to say, yeah, that <laughs> luck would, you know, play kind of a big part in that and that I almost feel, too, that there's an underlying sort of, I don't know if we're passing along this these this magical sort of uh, influence you know, generationally or kind of through the whatever. So maybe there are moments in a channeling, whatever mm -hmm. this power is, that there's a deeper wisdom that comes out sort of uh, reminds me of like that kind of airbendery, right? Like mm -hmm. you're Okay, so you can like it. tap into like yeah. generational memory. Yeah, something like that, exactly. Or and maybe oh. I don't even quite mm -hmm. remember it and I go into a state of some kind, but uh interesting. Yeah, that I, that feels good. Mm-hmm. I could see some sort of, you know, kind of reincarnating, you know, sort of daredevil risk-taking character mm -hmm. who has all of these links to their past lives and incarnations and can draw upon a lot of their, like, different experiences and skills and abilities, um, oh. but also has, you know, different, you know, sort of complications around how their, their past incarnations may have ended and some of them kind of badly. And then we've kind of got the option of, like, either you can keep running into your past incarnations through the time travel scenarios, or instead of you personally time traveling, every time we go back in time, it's like we there meet up are. with one of your past versions. <laughs> oh, wow. What an <laughs> idea. That is cool. You know, it's not you don't time travel, but you're kind of omnipresent. Yeah, you're like the through line. You're the zip line we used to time travel. <laughs> Holy crap. I love that. I, um, okay, yeah, soul. I, I really like that. So more of like a, my roots go back in time and, you know, we're connecting with, okay, mm -hmm. yeah. Wow, that, yeah. that's fun. All right, so we've got our main method of time travel. There fun, we go. Fun, fun. It's, it's Troy. Right. Uh, what about you, Steve? So I'm thinking like sort of a techno wizard type, you know, um, you know, somebody who's who's got a lot of of a lot of smarts, uh, is a lot of figuring things out, um, and is definitely like the the type to come up with a lot of on the fly solutions to things, you know, maybe has a lot of of gadgetry. Uh, maybe even play into the notion that we were, you know, a character who's mixing science and magic uh, in different ways. Mm -hmm. So, like, yeah, like you said, like a techno wizard. Yeah. And, oh, I like it. And uh, do you want to play with any of the, like, equipment that's in this book of, like, freezing things in time or wiping them out of the timeline entirely? Yeah, well, there'd definitely be room for that, you know, if we, if the the campaign includes a certain amount of, of you know, tech, time-based technology or the like. Yeah. I like it. Cool. So, like, do you go with the artificer feed or the inventor, or an artificer advantage or the inventor advantage or both? That's a question. It might even be both. I mean, they're, you know pretty you know they're each one point advantages so it would be, would be crazy to you know uh have both and and either alternate or combine them in some way nice i like it uh so yeah for me i am thinking a character out of classical literature mm -hmm. that has been drawn out of their fictional universe as specifically to be a time corrections person mm. Because ah. she's not a native part of this timeline. Mm. So any changes to this timeline don't affect won't, her. Yeah, won't affect her. I like it. Nice. And so it sounds like we've kind of like Troy, I get the impression you want to go with like a martial arts like once yeah. the spit hits the fan and we do the action scenes, do you want to be like kind of a martial artist or like wielding psychic power or you know, I think probably more physical and also you know it, it i'm wondering too um it do i know going into sort of the state like if my corporeal form i'm i'm, I'm still in the timeline but we're all mm -hmm. headed back and I, I maybe acting as the anchor do i know what my personalities are are we kind of you know is it sort of one of those situations like uh, what was that movie or that uh 
that uh, television show where the guy would jump into bodies. A quantum, quantum leap. leap? Yeah, is it like a quantum leap kind of thing? I don't quite know until I see myself, oh. or am I? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I'd like to think that, well, there are a lot of different ways you could do it, you know, um, but you could build the notion that your character has this sort of through line so that their abilities are fairly consistent for the most part. Yeah. Maybe with a small amount of variability that you can play around with from, from game session to game session. Yeah, uh, like a rank or two of the variable power so that you can right. change up like what physical stats you have in any given timeline. Right. Yeah, it'd be easier you to know, manage. This incarnation's a little stronger, this one's a little faster, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, but you can still channel the same like knowledge of, you know, martial arts or uh, right. fencing or I, I'm not sure what you want to go with. You know, I think uh, martial arts, I feel like that's that, that'll be sort of a, a unifying kind of presence and I think Mm -hmm. Given, yeah, yeah, uh, given sort of the calming, sort of focused nature that I need to sort of keep my psyche in in tune and not break up, mm -hmm. you know, into all the different, uh, yeah, sort of related Makes sense. needs. And, you know, yeah. your your body as a weapon is the one that goes with you no matter where. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. I like it. Uh, in that case, I am, um, I guess, going to lean towards like an archer or sharpshooter type. Mm hmm uh what do we have like in that direction as far as history goes hmm. like well okay, there's, Annie, could... there's annie oakley she was real oh that's true She's not oh calamity character. jane though calamity jane there you go that could be a lot of fun time traveling cowgirl right uh and yeah give her some investigative abilities mm -hmm. yeah like, maybe not the most social person in the world but can definitely pick up a trail, mm -hmm. be a sharp shot with a rifle, get her some kind of like magic or high tech or techno magic rifle and uh, mm -hmm. I don't know, Bowie knife. <gasps> right. You know, and if we wanted to even play on, because Calamity is such a great name, you know, she would be perfect for <laughs> assigning some luck powers of some kind that oh, maybe yeah. she has some, some kind, of, kind of probability <laughs> control. Oh, I kind of like the idea of, because she's fictional, she's not supposed to be in the timeline, and her being around just makes things sort of bend wrong around her. Mm, oh. A bit of a chaos effect, which also yeah. make a great um, complication. Yeah, actually, that's a great idea. <gasps> yeah, I'm feeling that, that. That is so cool. Also, uh, Nicole's like, yes, Calamity Jane. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then my, you know, techno wizard character kind of fills in a lot of gaps uh, as far as that goes. You know, uh, I'm figuring the character is going to have a pretty decent uh, array of, of, you know, gadgets uh, and the like, and maybe some uh, variability from uh, just power stunts and using uh, inventor uh, and the like. Nice. Jared says yeah. uh, Annie Oakley comes to mind too, and then Jonesy says bad lucky. <laughs> uh, yeah, man, we need we need at least one more player for this game, don't we? I know, mm, ideally. Hmm. <laughs> uh, so yeah, sounds like we've got a fun group. Uh, yeah. yeah, session zeros are easy and fast. Right now, so, we time travel <laughs> using Troy's character as kind of our homing beacon. Mm -hmm. to get us and maybe even our early warning system who like tells us you know something is wrong in a particular era uh, uh, i like that you I know do um, but how do we actually get there do we like walk through a doorway or a magical gate or um i'm seeing like that vehicle? sanctum sanctorum kind of space that opens up and there are doors that we mm -hmm. can walk through maybe that's kind of the stepping off into time as opposed to a space, you know, a different spot mm -hmm. in the world. I, how do you feel about that? That's pretty cool. Yeah. We could just use Troy himself as the gate. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Yes. I will just, I will wear a long trench coat and then I will open it. <laughs> if you can. <laughs> it's more thinking that Dr. Strange effect where like everything yes, sort of crumbles spin. and spins. And yeah, right. that sort of sparky spin thing. I like that. Um, uh, Jonesy asks, where and when uh, is home base? 
Mm, that's oh. a good question. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we were talking about the the void time zone, which is a magical demi plane held outside the timeline. Mm -hmm. So. So technically, it's nowhere and no when. Exactly. So even if we end up completely screwing the pooch and destroying the time stream, we could just go home and camp <laughs> out there for eternity. <laughs> Figure right. out how to fix yeah. it. <laughs> You know, I mean, that is all. That is the ultimate hope, right? Like, even right? if things go bad, you've got a safe place to retreat to and undo it all. Interesting. I wonder, you know, given the nature of time and the nature of our, you know, however we were recruited to kind of be a part of this, are we, you know, there's that time trope of, like, we are the cause of our own trouble, mm -hmm. and so we are constantly sort of moving through time together to try to fix the thing that we broke and that keep time keeps shifting and changing or are we just uh you know there and ready to go like the avengers you know give them a call and we appear yeah i kind of like the idea that there's another organization trying to mm -hmm. tweak things in the past Ooh, maybe like it's that. like like weird super evolved I don't know, Gowanas from an alternate timeline where human just mm -hmm. humans just went completely off track and they became the dominant life form and right. they're trying to make sure that this happens. Well, I mean, Troy's character is perfect for somebody who has an arch enemy with a similar ability. Oh, yeah. Oh, wild. Like we're kind of having this race through time through the mm -hmm. psyches of ourselves or... Oh, here's a question yeah. real quick. Uh, um, Jared says, does time leak in, like a uh, like a bit leaks in and changes the base? Mm, maybe. Yeah. That's interesting. It might not normally, but I can certainly see an adventure where that would happen. Yeah, where there's like deliberate sabotage right. or like a yeah. temporal storm. The archvillain somehow gets the, you know, tentacles or roots, you know, kind of into, uh, oh, hello, Nicholas. Uh, Nicholas joins us and says, how do I always get here late and race through time? This is perfect. <laughs> Thank you, friend. I'm glad you're caught up with us. Um, okay, yeah, so did we, so we're outside of the time, out of, we're out of time. Yeah, like our, like our home base is outside of time. I love it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, for those of you showing up late, we are basically running through like a sample session zero for our, how to put together a time travel based campaign using the time travel codex <gasps> yeah and we've got some great stuff this is really yes, amazing yeah. Yeah. yeah i i also like the idea that our our like alternate version of troy our evil troy our our yort uh if you will <laughs> uh, can also pull fictional characters out of mm -hmm. like outside of time so that we right. can fight dr frankenstein or you know, Moriarty or whoever mm -hmm. we feel like going up against. Oh, I like that a lot. Especially if he's, you know, basically got control over them. You know, I mean, once he's pulled them into our time stream, it's mm -hmm. it's like, well, if you want to continue to exist, yeah, you're basically going to do what I say. Interesting. Uh, that that creates sort of a complication in my mind of uh, of accidentally pulling people and then also feeling so guilty mm -hmm. about trying to you know get rid of them that i mm -hmm. you know end up with we end sure. up with a lot of friends <laughs> yeah. well i mean that could even you know set up the potential background that maybe that's how calamity jane got here that's yeah. what i'm thinking yeah and, but she somehow has managed to slip you know from you know this bad guy's control and influence and is just like yeah I'm yeah, I had to latch myself to somebody else with the same powers. Mm -hmm. Nicholas says, that's how you force loyalty. Perfect. <laughs> Ow. I know, right? Interesting. So Apook says, I always thought an immortal character uh, in a time travel group would be interesting visiting or working against younger versions of themselves, maybe having mm -hmm. to show their new mm -hmm. friends a version of themselves uh, from the past that they didn't like. That's an interesting yeah. complication. I mean... That's the that's the like late campaign reveal that Yort mm -hmm. is actually Troy at a different stage in his life. Dun, dun, right. dun. Future version of him, past version of him. <laughs> I love it. I absolutely love it. And then, uh, oh, you know, that could be maybe why my physical body can't leave outside time. I can't mm -hmm. step into time because something it would bad. be a paradox. Yes. Oh, yeah. Interesting. <laughs> Nicholas says taking notes. Um, yeah, this is. Fascinating. Okay, so what uh, what is next on our 
on our uh, checklist? I mean, next, like we typically go through and figure out like what are some things like we definitely don't want to to deal with in our mm -hmm. fun, happy game. And I'm just going to put in like, I'm going to go ahead and gloss over a lot of historical homophobia and sexism just for the mm. sake of, you know, having a fun time running around with Romans and in Victorian England. Mm -hmm. I love little that. what we could call cartoon history. Yeah, yeah. We're going to go with more comic book history and uh, downplay some of the historical horrificness. Mm. I gotcha. So for us, I love this. We're setting sort of a tone and having a dialogue mm -hmm. that we're not going to we're going to just take a little break in our fun gameplay and have fun <laughs> <laughs> rather than yeah, uh, exactly. dig through all the issues of our past. Uh, we do that on a daily basis. So, uh, oh, Nicholas asked a question. So is it too evil holding the PC's baby selves hostage? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, is that too evil or is it more evil when you rescue them and then use them to start a baby based spinoff? Oh, right. right. That is, yeah, yeah. These babies are... Time patrol are, babies. Time yeah, patrol right. Babies. These babies are out of time. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> they grow up so fast, unless... <laughs> unless, right. Uh, that's good. Uh, Great question, Nicholas. Yeah. Thanks. Um, uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, and, like, what I usually like to ask people when we're sitting down and, like, doing our session zero is, like, pitch me one or two NPCs. They could be like mm -hmm. people who are in the void time zone with you, like staff or, you know, overseers or your interns who depend on you. Uh, they could be your like rivals from, you know, within the agency or from another agency. They could be like your Biff Tannen who just inexplicably shows up in every time period, or they could be like big villains. Right. Yeah, it would be good, good to have some staff around the the headquarters just so that we're not always talking to ourselves Yeah, yeah. as far as yeah. that goes. Like, I'm going to pitch a nervous librarian who doesn't like excitement, so does not go on the time travel missions, mm -hmm. but oh. loves research. Oh, I love that. Okay, right? so sort of a, a, a helpful <laughs> research person. Now, so when I'm out of my body and doing that, what what's happening to me? And I'm just sort of sitting, sort of cross legged in a in that special mm -hmm. room, and sort of you know. Yeah. Well, that's to that's watch. an interesting question. If if Troy, if your character exists in all of these time periods and in particular incarnations, what form of you, if any, exists in our headquarters, and how do we yeah. interact with you there? Is it, is it like are you are you perhaps a disembodied voice there? Oh my goodness! Uh -huh. Wow. Wow, that uh, that feels right. <laughs> that feels right. You know, and I was too. I was thinking, sort of, because of the nature of time travel, perhaps that having that grounding physical presence in our um, in our headquarters allows mm -hmm. us to come back and forth. Mm -hmm. So if I were to be removed or whatever, so it's kind of a like my physical body is maybe almost in a kind of catatonic state sort of just you know oh yeah just like mm -hmm. in in storage like in a yeah. crystal or something well yeah that kind mm -hmm. of a thing and then when when people come back we can interact and talk but while while we're away we're really away and maybe mm -hmm. that nervous librarian also is sort of tending to <laughs> the you know to keep an eyeball on on mm -hmm. uh, what my I mean, physical we can, body's doing. we can introduce more staff besides the nervous librarian absolutely too. you could have like we could have like a an adjunct wizard who you know watches over like the the void time zone while we're gone. Mm -hmm. Oh, I wonder yeah. if there could. Nicholas, your questions are are just like chef's kiss. You can't yeah. see me because I don't have a body. But uh, Nicholas also <laughs> says, mm -hmm. what's the easiest way to keep track of changes throughout time based on the PC's actions? Uh, Ooh, that's a yeah, so that's an interesting question. Uh, I mean, it's going to be a different answer for everyone. Uh, mm -hmm. I like a bulletin board with like a thread running through it, sort of like Back to the Future chalkboard style. Like I'm tracking a ser serial killer style. Mm -hmm. Yep. So you can kind of picture where things went off track. But I, I tend to be a visual thinker. Uh, yeah. I'm sure keeping notes will work better for some people. Uh, and 
I mean, depending on the kind of campaign you want to run, the branching timelines or the immutable timeline that always tries to write itself. Uh, I mean, for this campaign, I think branching timelines is probably the better it feels, option. But yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. if, if it's our job to try and keep the one true timeline on track, then a timeline that keeps itself on track isn't super. Right. That doesn't, doesn't need as much protecting. We've got yeah. a couple really, really great um, uh, suggestions <laughs> here. One of them is uh, uh, NPC idea, a Doc Brown Q, like a Star Trek kind of uh, uh, character, mm -hmm. maybe a, a, yeah. some sort of nuisance menace that randomizes our <laughs> you know, problems. Uh, Owen says, NPC by the name of Nick, Nick O'Time, neither <laughs> friend nor foe, but an iffy morality temporal merchant who takes things from one time zone where they're cheap and sells them elsewhere where they're costly oh, that... time traveling hairy mud <laughs> that sounds time annoying quark. already we could even call him quark and it works i love uh, it yes it does <laughs> that is so great. Uh, yeah i love the idea of like just not even not even a villain but just scum we keep a running rogue. into yeah yeah, a rogue. yeah somebody just an a opportunist no not a dashing time rogue, but a lovable time rogue. Yeah, mm -hmm. somebody who is like maybe at first we're suspicious and sort of, you know, but then becomes someone who we yeah. begrudgingly but kind like, of, yeah. Right. Yeah, and and, like every now and then we've got to go to him because we're stranded in, say, the court of King Arthur and we don't have our time pistols. Right. And, and it can be sort of For one example. of those deal with the devil kind of, I, you know, where we mm -hmm. get the good deal or we don't get a good deal. Or anything yeah. close to a good deal happens we are instantly suspicious uh, yeah. kevin haley says idea or suggestion possible random effect a, a temporal storm where oddly colored lightning we strike inserting oh, something yeah. from an alternate oh, yes. reality or sending something to an alternate oh that's hilarious we're doing oh, thing. yep. things from an alternate time yes. like like you've finally gotten a handle on say ancient egypt and then suddenly mammoths right right yeah yeah or we're talking to somebody and in the midst of that a temporal storm is coming and maybe it's something one of us can sense and something in the room or something by us we know it's going to happen we try to like that's an interesting complication we have to get out of the Although way or I, what we're talking to gets zapped into you know into another timeline i am mm -hmm. realizing though there were still mammoths on earth while they were building the pyramids right so maybe not that up yeah maybe not mammoths <laughs> Maybe maybe cyberpunk bikers come to ancient Egypt. Sure. Why why is that just blowing my mind for some reason? But that is I'm just I I have no idea. Well, that's the beauty of time travel. You yeah. Know? Absolutely. Owen says, what if different uh, forms of time travel uh, follow different rules? So branching timelines mm -hmm. is most common, but the old time gates from first from the first people can rewrite all timelines. Oh, I like that. Oh, Add yeah. all timelines at yeah. once. Interesting. Oh yeah yeah. yeah the, the time gates are like the the I can't remember what we called them in the book. The immutable points that everything mm -hmm. fixed like, time, yeah, fixed time points that you can't change anything about, and kind of serve to write. I like that. how time mm -hmm. flows. Yeah, they can Ooh. be sort of time dams, you know, in terms mm -hmm. of changes. Oh, I like that too. Yeah, this is so great. Um, I'm getting very excited yeah. about this. Uh, a question that Nicholas has, real quick, is. Uh, how would you describe the end of time and the beginning of time? Whoa, buddy. Oh, that's different for everybody. <laughs> yeah. Uh, again, one of my favorite comes from old Ninja Turtle comics where the end of time is just a wall. Mm -hmm. And the yeah. harder you try to press against it, the more the wall gets angry at you and pushes <laughs> back. Ooh, and something from beyond it will basically lash out against you if you try to push beyond. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Here's a question. Yeah, I mean, most oh, go ahead. time travel models set up some kind of you know approach where basically there's a point you know before and after where you can't go any further. There's just yeah. nothing there. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And and my question too about specific to the time sort of thing that we're fighting against. You know, and and there's always that sort of entropy is the the thing we're you know kind of trying to you know either stall or or what have you. It, you know, I imagine there being aspects of this time travel or experiences where we get a little too close to that edge or mm -hmm. end or, and, sure. you know, what's, um, you know, what does that look like? Like, are there pieces of time that, you know, the more we push that it kind of crumbles mm -hmm. or 
aspects of time get sort of well we we talk in the codex about various kinds of temporal hazards mm. that characters mm. can encounter and the notion that there are dangerous energies or the like uh, that they can be bombarded with or exposed to that can cause different afflictions or cause you know different effects you know is definitely one of the things you can build into your time travel scenarios and say okay you know, if you're going, you know, in this particular region towards close to the end of time, you know, the entropic effects are things you're going to have to make, you know, fortitude checks against. Right. Um, yeah, your body will just start to unravel or you'll age so fast that you don't have more than a minute or two to function mm -hmm. at the end of time before you're dust. <laughs> right. It's, it's like when you take a deep sea fish up to the surface and it goes from being a handsome little bass to being a blobfish. <gasps> <laughs> right. Exactly. Oh, those poor blobfish. <laughs> right. <laughs> if you've never, if you have no idea what we're talking about, Google what do blobfish look like in the bottom of the sea? Because they're just attractive, normal little fish down there. Right. Are they really? Well, I've only seen are. them as yeah. that sort of yeah. Yeah. When, there's, yeah. when there's 100 atmospheres of pressure on the outside of them, yes. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> right, I feel called out. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I just got a note from somebody. I'm, I'm looking. Somebody said uh, Owen shares uh, that uh, Stan Brown drew some mm -hmm. artwork for this stream. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, time. Did he? We're honored. Time Stan? werewolves. I, I'm. I am to uh, <laughs> understand. Uh, I'm gonna Wait, look. Has Stan already drawn time werewolves? Yeah. He's fast. Is Stan? Wow. Yeah. That's. Fantastic, and Stan, I gotta tell you, I stand you, Stan, because we yeah. <laughs> uh, we've been desperate for some artists to art up some stuff, and so uh, I'm gonna dig in there. And, oh, and, uh, yeah, you've gotta you gotta dig in there and screen share this stuff, Troy. Heck, I do. Oops. I will do such a thing, and I will do that now. Um, I think now we've officially got to make the time werewolves like enemies. I know. Now we've got to make it a thing. Yeah. They're. What is this? Is this just what gets unleashed when time gets pushed too far off track? Like these are the things that come in and eat the bad timeline? Ooh, like mm. antibodies, time antibodies. Right. Yeah, like Langoliers. Yeah. But oh, yes, they're werewolves. Yes, yeah. But they're werewolves. But they're werewolves. I like it. You know. That's like every day is a werewolf apocalypse, but. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, when you're a time traveling werewolf, is every night a full moon, basically? Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. Well, you can always have a gate open to somewhere where it's a full moon. Right. How many different ways am my mind going to get blown during this conversation? Because <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, that's wow, wow. Okay. Writing time yeah. travel stuff is fun because oh, God, you can just so... be over the top. Yeah. So did you have any good NPC ideas you wanted to toss out, Steve? So I think that... Um, Besides the time werewolves. Right. I, saw, I mean, it's kind of hard to beat the time werewolves at this <laughs> right. point, but... Um, it would be interesting if um, we had some, I, I think the idea of, you know, sort of the, you know, roguish, you know, sort of time merchant character is an interesting one. Yeah. It, the other thing, challenging thing with time travel uh, characters is coming up with interesting NPCs that the characters can mm -hmm. encounter, um, you know, outside of their, headquarters because they're always visiting a new time period or a new uh place you know in the timeline you know it, it they're, they're always running into new characters um and there's not a lot of of consistency as far as that goes it would be interesting if we had um another sort of recurring character of some kind who was um a, not necessarily an ally, not necessarily an enemy, mm -hmm. you know, maybe um, someone who is, uh, uh, you know, or a researcher or something who's, yeah. who's like recording these things. So like, like a ta time traveler who studies the past or sets right. time or like, like the watcher who's just immortal. Mm -hmm. You know, right. and just kind mystery. of like keeping an eye on things, but, you know, isn't like too normally too inclined to help us out as far as that goes because you know spoilers yeah i like it yeah i love that idea i do too yeah somebody yeah. somebody you can go to to use your contacts advantage but right you know but maybe you they like you but they can't really get directly involved 
Mm -hmm. You know, but occasionally they're willing to like, you know, drop a hint, like, mm -hmm. in like, the rules. Bring your umbrella on Wednesday. <laughs> Right. <laughs> right. It turns out because it's a rain of flaming kittens on Wednesday. <laughs> right. Oh, I love that. Don't shield the prime minister, then World War VI starts. Mm -hmm. Here, take this potato. You'll know why. <laughs> right. right. You'll know when the time comes. You'll know. <laughs> It'll become clear. Yeah. Yeah. Do like that. You know. Yeah. One thing that's also great about. Um, time travel too is um, the opportunity to use hero points to yes. edit scenes, and I was just thinking about that notion in relation <laughs> to this character of you know oh, some yeah. things being the occasional sort of retroactive advantage, mm -hmm. you know of you know well this character contact gives you something, mm -hmm. but you don't have to decide what it is until later. <laughs> oh, I love that. You know, and you could just spend a hero point and make make it. You know, it's it's Schrodinger's thing mm -hmm. until then, and you then just, you just spend a hero point and it becomes something. Yeah, you keep it in your Schrodinger box. Yes, of course. And so then you good. spend a hero point and it becomes your Chekhov's box. Mm -hmm, exactly. It was always that way. <laughs> All right. Sorry. I'm. I'm. Uh, love it. Yeah, I love it too. I'm. I'm getting our time. <laughs> this is so good. Uh, thank you, Stan. I will share it here in just a moment. I'm getting it. Uh, Getting it off of slacks. Um, yeah, this is kind of how my modern age campaign came together because half the NPCs in that are suggestions from my my players. Mm -hmm. Yeah, their their default headquarters has become the gentleman's club owned by my wife's rival, mm -hmm. who they hate each other but they love each other because they spent a winter in the Yukon snowed in together. <gasps> Mm -hmm. Oh, some great suggestions. <laughs> uh, Stan Brown says he could be called the spoiler. <laughs> Talking about oh, it. <laughs> that could even be a nickname that we gave, you know, as sort of a. Mm -hmm. oh, right. This is so right. great. Um, Owen says, My I'm, true name cannot be known to you. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. Otherwise. <laughs> is it Jeremy? Uh, it's probably Jeremy. It's probably it's Chuck. Probably. Yeah, right. Um, Owen says, I'm the chronicler of the chronicler of all time. I am not here to interfere, only to record. Take this potato. Did you? <laughs> right. <laughs> anyway, I have too many potatoes. Please remove this one. Oh, I like Don't throw it away. Chronicus, right. the eater of time, and the harbingers yeah. of Chronicus that choose timelines for him to yeah. consume, destroying them. I am wearing my Galactus shirt today. That is oddly. <laughs> that is so funny. Okay. Um, I think, are we all wearing superhero? Or comic book shirts today because I've got my Wonder Woman shirt. Sadly. Oh no, Steve, you are you are our steadiest source of comic book I shirts. Know. We're just following <laughs> your lead, and you changed up the playbook. <laughs> um, cool. Okay, okay great. We understand. Great, great. Everyone needs a break. This great. laundry day. What can I tell you? <laughs> I get it. Um, okay, cool. So, uh, <laughs> holy smokes, it's three oh six. Right. So, yeah, that is that is the basics of how to run a session zero and get everybody excited and i mean normally i'd also ask like you know how do we know each other things like that mm -hmm. you know whatever feels important for kicking off the campaign making sure everybody's kind of on the same on the same right. wavelength right talk about you know like the point where we want to start mm -hmm. you know in terms of you know are the characters already a team you know are we going to play out how the characters get together yeah, so those kinds of be, things. Yeah, we could have been doing this together for like years now, and mm -hmm. you know, yeah, every yeah. now and then flash back to an earlier adventure that lays the seeds for the next session. Or right, yeah, I like that. The other thing too, um, just sort of looking back on this process, I think the thing to remember is that because Crystal and Steve and I have been doing this for a while, just kind of talking to each other <laughs> through this medium. Uh, I, if it were a group that I was a little less familiar with, I would, um, mm -hmm. I think I would have defaulted to addressing some of the managing of expectations around the table. Yes. Mm -hmm. But yeah. yeah, yeah. And we did a little bit of that, but I think we kind of have a, a, a sort of shorthand and a little bit of a psychic sort of, we just know context of, you know, here we're doing yeah, a live stream and what we've known each other for years now. Yeah, so. yeah mm -hmm. exactly. Right. So take that into consideration for folks who are listening. Uh, it's important right. to, and to, yeah. With a, with a larger group of players, you know, you'd want to make sure that everybody got a chance to be heard and have some input and 
some people are more dynamic and involved in these kinds of conversations and other people are, you know, thinking their answers through, mm -hmm. you know, and, and may not jump right in with a particular idea, especially, yeah. you know, in front of everybody as far as yeah. that goes. Well, Krista, one yeah, of the so things I want to keep, oh, sorry. Oh, no, no, you go ahead. I was going to say, one of the things you absolutely want to keep in mind is, you know, session zero isn't fully done until you start session one, you know, a few days mm -hmm. or a week later. So be open to changes by email, you know, give the game master a chance to type everything up. Normally I'd be taking down some basic notes on all this and right. because people might come up with a great name for their character and people still need to come up with their stat blocks. And, you know, usually I like to ask people what your niche is going to be. Like, what's the one thing you want to be best at at the table? Like, do you want to be the best at investigating things or at fixing things or the best at wrestling or... Like, mm -hmm. what is the one challenge you want to come up every now and then that you are just like the person to go to? I love that. One of the things I wanted to mention too, Crystal, just as something I really appreciated was your, uh, because time travel, we can just kind of go all over the place. <laughs> you're, you're kind of guiding us and then also being sure that you said, hey, Steve, how about you on this thing? As I was freaking mm -hmm. out about, you know, uh, <laughs> the fact that, you know, there were mammoths and you know the <laughs> builders of pyramids at, at the same time i'm still kind of processing that uh but it was just really thoughtful and i thought um a, a good it set the tone for all right how about you you, you know like get mm -hmm. get involved and get engaged and then i also too like that you just ask sort of very direct friendly sort of drawing out questions sort of like no no it's your turn to sort of put this together and i had a little pang of like Oh God, I'm gonna say something stupid. But then we all just sort of dove in and it was really fun. Oh no, the, I love collaboration. Like I, mm -hmm. as a writer and as a game designer, I think all of the best projects I've ever done were the result of things like this, where we all sat mm -hmm. down at a table together and talked through like, what if this, and is this all right? And I like this idea, but how do I make it not dumb? Right, yeah. I've, yeah. I've had a lot of ideas that were kind of great, but silly. <laughs> And having somebody like Steve, who is just ingenious, to help me figure out a way to make my my terrible ideas fun or my fun ideas good. And that's the other thing I love about this is that we didn't take ourselves too terribly seriously. Like you, we just basically said, "Hey, you know what? We're not going to do. We're not no. going to do that thing where we're just like you know fighting the world's ills. This is an opportunity for us to maybe mm -hmm. not do. That. We do that every day. Right. <laughs> right." This um, is a chance for us to punch time werewolves. I exactly. love it. Uh, speaking of <laughs> Sent which... Sent by the future Gowana people. <laughs> right. Um, I am... Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm going to uh, <laughs> to transition to this so we can see. And let's cross... Okay. Uh, this cross is the most dangerous our... trick of uh, for Troy to do is screen share. Can yeah. he if, do it? Why if this not? destroys everything, it was nice knowing everybody. Yes, right. yes. Yeah, you can blame Zoomy Zoom, but uh, here we go. <laughs> Nope. <laughs> can the stream see it? I mean, if if they can. Oh, oh, so uh, we don't get to see it. That seems unfair. I'm trying to bring up the stream. Okay. No, I'm not. <laughs> Dan's art is amazing, so I have no doubt it is fantastic. Mm hmm. <laughs> it's uh it's wow. pretty amazing i love that's, it that's pretty impressive for uh during our stream <laughs> it is indeed stan and I, is ridiculously fast stan yeah. that, that it's just incredible we do do uh we do do appreciate this uh <laughs> yeah let's roll time werewolves but do you hear the music playing <laughs> It, oh, is it that time again? It's that time. It oh. is indeed. Um, I can't believe it. I could do this for literally another two hours, which is why these <laughs> things last for two hours when we're going with it. Uh, do we want to bring this back in some fashion, like sort of the uh, sort of little baby sort of bites mm -hmm. of a of a you know sort of this zero uh, session? I mean, yeah. I mean. 
we could do them if people like them. I, I just wanted to do at least an example because we've we've talked about session zeros before mm -hmm. and what you do in them, but we've never really, you know, sat down and shown people this is what we mean. True, right. very true. A question for uh, our friends in the uh, that are if that are paying ever... attention. You want us to do more of this? You want us to unpack more about our characters in this yeah. uh, special kind of space? And if so, mm -hmm. let us know and. Um, you can do so by dropping, of course, a, a comment in the chat because we pay close attention. But you can also send a note to Let's Play at GreenRonin.com with any ideas, any art, any um, compliments, um, you know, uh, requests for an address for some holiday cookies that you didn't bake but <laughs> mailed to us. Um, my favorite issue. We do have cookies. a PO box specifically for mm. receiving baked goods. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, I'm telling you, uh, friends, there are. Uh, Wow, yeah, there are uh, lots of people saying, unpack more. <laughs> All right. Aww. Yeah. All right. And if, wow. And if folks want us to do other, like, brainstorming yeah. session zeros for other like, things. You could absolutely do, do one of these for the Supernatural Handbook, the Cosmic Handbook, Hero High. Mm -hmm. We do. We can't do Hero High without bringing on, like, Lucian. <gasps> yeah, we would need a guest. Lucian, having work. Lucian for that would be great. Oh, yeah. my gosh, that would be great. I want to meet I, I you have do. to. I have to. You, do. you really do. I have to. Um, you know, the other thing I was going to suggest is that um, maybe, just maybe, because of the nature of time, we could bring a guest from the people who are watching. Mm -hmm. Like maybe they yeah. could join us in the future for future talk. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Think we could get Owen Casey Stevens, the nicest man in gaming. Oh, well, I hope so. Uh, oh, hopefully, he'd be too nice to say no. You know, speaking <laughs> speaking of right, that's probably true. But speaking of Owen, um, we are uh, doing Thursday with Owen. It is Yay. so fun. I'm telling you, Owen is just a wit, just a master at just sort of uh, improvisation and being able. I will tell you, as and you know me, both of you know me quite well. I can derail anything. Like, I can throw us off mm -hmm. the rails, and Owen is right there. Like, literally <laughs> making it look as though we planned it, and Owen has a way of making you look so good. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so now it's sort of the challenge, and so I'm, I'm introducing something called, um, Hey, Owen, stat this. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to be bringing in some you know, art from our uh, community, mm -hmm. maybe some art that I made, and Owen will, you know, hey, Owen, stat this, and we'll see mm -hmm. if we can stump him. I'd have yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd say, hey, Owen, stat our time werewolves, but we have, like, a whole section on mm -hmm. chronozoids. Right. Uh, somewhere in here. Here we go. Yeah. Though so, Owen's ability to simultaneously stat things in multiple game systems is legendary. It is amazing. I have... I have no idea how he keeps up with it. I I just assume there are actually three Owens, and they that, take turns that like, would writing. That would make sense. Hmm. Maybe there's some time travel going on. Um, mm -hmm. Well, friends, listen. We are at... So I think now we've literally done uh, a full hour. We are we are back on time, having been out of time, um, and we you know are, are not even here yet. So... Map that. A Time Werewolves of Freeport. <laughs> Josie. Ooh. Making that thread. I love it. Mm -hmm. uh, David Body says more Thundar. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Thundar is such a sweet spot. Oh, it right. is. Yeah. <laughs> but we, we all have that uh, nostalgia bug for Thundar for sure. Um, all right, friends. Thank you so much for watching and hanging out. Um, thank you so much for having fun with us. Uh, Crystal, Steve literally one of the highlights of my week it is the Aww. best way to open the door on a week and i look forward to it and i'm always a little sad when it ends but always a little excited <laughs> because we have so much more to come awesome any um, words you'd like to share uh i mean definitely pick yourself up a copy of the condition cards i've got mm -hmm. mine coming soon yep. i'm really looking forward to it because Literally, my first project uh, that I think anybody at Green Ronin ever noticed was I made mm -hmm. a, a fan deck of condition cards just after third edition came out. Yeah. Shared them on the uh, on the message boards. Yep. And we were pretty impressed by that because oh. they were great. <laughs> 
phenomenal. I, mean, I yeah. was doing professional graphic design at the time. Right. We've dropped some links in the chat, and um, and yeah, I would take care of yourselves, and you know, yep. wear those masks. Wear we want to get out of here. You know, we want to yeah. hang out in yes. person. Uh, Steve, Stay maybe. safe. Keep yeah. everybody else safe. Mm -hmm. And join us next Monday um, after, of course, you join us on Thursday for Thursday Age with yes. Owen. And that's it. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a wonderful day, and we will talk to you again soon. Take care, everybody. Bye. Be good to yourselves.